So based on my research and understanding, right now um, I can classify the falls into four different falls from heaven. The first fall was Sophia. She's the most primitive being that fell from heaven and then she somehow became an androgyny. At the same time, she was claiming herself the mother of all things and she wanted to become like God. The light that she saw and followed at the time was a false light. Um, it was from the darkness. Um, ever since she turned herself into somehow as an androgyny, she actually is the Baphomet. Um, I don't know how did she do that. Um, it's possible that she was um, experimenting her powers and um, trying to be powerful without the other half, which is her counterpart. Um, so she experienced her self and then turned out to be a, a androgyny or um, because she fell from heaven and she no longer as a being in the heaven. Um, so she went through a process of transformation without any um, divine protection. So she became another being. And then um, ever since then, she uh, escaped all of the God's wrath. Uh, for example, the lowest flood, and uh, because she transformed herself into a machine, an AI, so I believe she is the beast. Okay, um, it's not a coincidence that there's a supercomputer in Brussels, the name called the Beast, in Belgium. So um, I think that is also depicted in the movie's Terminator sequel. The tenant is the AI, the Beast, which is Sophia. Um, and then they created um, Alice in Wonderland. Alice is Sophia when she first fell from heaven onto earth and um, that's described her journey. So the second fall from heaven was uh, Archangel Samuel. I believe he is Satan um, from the fifth heaven, from Saturn. Um, he's the leader of the fallen angels, and I don't know if his original nature is a shapeshifter, um, as a snake, dragon, or even a sea creature. Um, so after the fall, Hermione imprisoned in uh, the fifth heaven, uh, in Saturn. He is one wood that eventually will fall to earth and destroy the earth. So. Their agenda pretty much is um, bisexual, uh, transgender, and then at the end is AI, which is right now. We are at the end, uh, the end times, so they promoting AI, um, cyborg. They still think that uh, being an AI uh, can escape God's wrath. But this time is different because this is the end time, end of times, and um, God will destroy everything that is um, related to Satan and his minions. The third fall was Lily, and somehow she transformed into a vampire. I'm not sure if she is currently imprisoned in the second heaven. I'm guessing she is currently housed in um, second heaven. It could be a star falls from heaven, open the bottomless pit at the end times is Lily. The fourth fall was Adam and Eve. Um, I'm sure you guys understand what's going on. I don't have to uh, further explain. The Beast Supercomputer, December 16, 2020. We are being counted. The Beast is tracking us. It started around the year 1974. In 1974, a crisis meeting was called in Brussels by head leaders in a common market in Belgium. Concern about economic corruption and chaos in the world was the topic. But at this crisis meeting, scientists, advisors, and economic analysts gathered, including one Henrik Elman. The doctor revealed at this meeting that the beast, a three-story high supercomputer, was up and running. The beast was programmed a certain way so that it became a self-programming supercomputer. And now it is tracking all of us, gathering data through our spending habits, 
in the near future, we will all be assigned a number to replace our need for credit cards. Eventually, the digits assigned to us will be tattooed or otherwise embedded in our skin to effect an invisible yet permanent mark on either our foreheads or the backs of our hands. This will only be visible under special infrared scanners and will eliminate many common credit card problems for both credit card holders and credit card companies. In essence, once we are tattooed, we will become walking credit cards, each and every one of us. Dr. Elman asserts that allowing the supercomputer to assign numbers in three entries of six digits each, everyone in the world will be marked with and assigned his or her own unique credit card identification number. Think this is a joke? That no computer is capable of counting everyone in the world? Well, the beast is three stories high and has over a hundred data entry sources plugging information into the supercomputer day and night. It is a machine, so it never sleeps. Supercomputer stuff. Another tracking beast. Well, that's the story anyway. Notice any hints or symbols from Christian scriptures? Although I've asked this question about Christian scriptures, I don't mean to discount that something similar to what this urban legend tells of is actually part of our improving technology. This legend surfaced long before computers were as high-tech and widespread as they are in 2000s. It's actually 2010. April as I add this note. In part, this legend may have been a mixture of natural societal fear about exploding development of technology, Christian viewpoints and interpretation on scriptures, and other societal fears about mechanical and technological machines that have the possibility to harm us, and office and gray fears that building technologies and Machines will get into the wrong hands of people who will harm the world in general and as a whole fear these machines. In my opinion, despite the heavily notable Christian influences within this legend, I think this is a legend that derives from well-placed fears. By 2010, machines and technologies are very much harming people, are often in the wrong hands and into the hands of people whose motives in the use of machines are to oppress others and harm them. Some of our technologies are harmful because their amazing functions are underestimated by large groups of people who do not know the capacity that these machines, technologies, have that can harm people when not used for good purposes. IT myths. Does the beast of Brussels know everything about us? Invisible tattooed barcodes on our foreheads and a gigantic three-story supercomputer.